Is it some devil that crawls inside of you? This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast. Welcome back. Um, hope you've had a lovely, lovely, lovely year. Hope you had a lovely Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Uh, good riddance 2020. What's the date today? What is it? It's fucking... We're getting there. We're getting there. Sunday, December 27th. I'm recording this at 7.30 in the evening. Got the house to myself for a little bit. Maybe I'll crank one out. One last one of the year. You're probably listening to this in the new year. As far as I know, I've made it, I'm alive, I'm healthy, kind of, maybe not, and 2020 is going to be in the rearview mirror by the time you're listening to this. We're going to be completely free of it. Maybe. I mean, we're not going to be free from the trauma and the horror and the potential virus infection, but who knows? It's hard to tell, hard to say. Uh, I'm just remaining, you know ever vigilant in my fucking pursuit of God knows what. This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast, folks. How you doing? I'm just uh, finishing off my list here. I got 20 for you. That's right, 20 things for 2020 that I like, that I'm happy about, that made this actually not a whole fucking wash of a year, you know? I, my condolences to you uh, if you had a shitty year. Um, everyone did. And I'm sure some horrible, horrible fucking things happened to you and your family and loved ones and friends and businesses you like. And your rights were raped and fucking shot in the head in front of you. These things happen. So I, there's no trigger warnings here. This is, this is episode 79, 80. This is, we're deep into this, folks. If you need to know by now that some of the things I say are going to be, well, how do I put it? Upsetting? Offensive? Inappropriate? Annoying? There's a lot of different, different ways to describe this show. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I don't have a guest here to sit and talk about the year with you know kylie's not here right now but uh i do i do plan on having a someone someone over soon or maybe being over at someone's house or do it in the park or wherever the gays congregate to have sex that's where i'll record it sure some pleasant sounds and smells in the area Maybe a nice truck stop. This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm just going to get right into it. This is 20 for 2020. I only have 18 things written down because I'm a fucking poor sport of a man. I really... I love this podcast more than anything. Like, I somehow cannot be good about it. It's not that I don't have ideas. It's not that I don't have things I want to talk about. It's not that I don't record episodes that end up turning into complete utterless crap. There's two episodes recently that I recorded that turned out with no sound and I just fucked up the mic setting or the microphone didn't come through. I don't know what happened. I'm bummed. I'm so upset. I can't, I can't get those moments back. And I thought I recorded them. One was an audio commentary of the Alien vs. Predator movie. Fucking hilarious. Great time with Daniel Bax. Two-time, three-time guest. Great guy. But it's fucking gone. Sucks. Another one was an awesome uh, outdoors podcast. Watch the sunset with Kylie on top of Figueroa Mountain. Beautiful. Ah, great fucking hilarious conversation. There's a different type of... A discussion that goes on when you're in public and when you're in the open public land rather not even public public implies that there's going to be some fucking homeless guy walking by there's homeless women too whatever homeless women, women i i'm not going to get into it i don't give a shit 
Um, you don't give a shit about women? Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Fuck off. <laughs> that's not, not what you're saying. Okay, 2020. 20 for 20. This is the 20 for 2020 list. I'm going at it. I'm going to add the last two uh, as we go along. Uh, I'm just going to fucking try to save a minute or two for each topic, and then we're going to fucking move on because uh, this is in no particular order because the chaos that ensued this year was in no fucking particular order. Here we go. Uh, number one, maybe this is the number one in my heart and eyes and top prize, even though it's in no particular order. I moved into my first apartment with Kylie. It's terrific. I finally moved out of my mother's house, not, you know, for a lack of trying. I did try multiple times. Tried to move in with an ex once, tried to join the Conservation Corps, uh, tried to uh, move to Tennessee. Uh, there, you know, saved a bunch of money. Like, there's a couple of times when I was sincerely was ready to go or ready to begin going, and I didn't. But uh, I finally did it this year, and it's been terrific. And I couldn't be happier to live with someone like her. And I'm happy to be in a relationship that is uh, still growing and still rewarding. So, this is one of the best things that happened to me in 2020 in an abysmal year. Number two, something that happened recently, but in my heart should have happened a long time ago, but maybe I'm being a dumb, cocky asshole. Uh, I got my blue belt promotion. Finally, after through almost four years of jujitsu, I fucking finally found a gym that uh, I could get promoted at through stripes, which is a big deal. It's just a little stepping stone. So I went from a white belt to a blue belt. There's only five general belts in jujitsu. Getting to the second one is a really big deal. Um, basically means that you're here, you showed up, and you're ready to learn. White belt is just, there's a variety. But again, I've been training since 2017, something I've always loved. The blue belt, big fucking deal to me. Got some recognition. Um, but I still, I will say that when I go to the gym with my blue belt, I feel like a complete fucking ass face. Like it's a little embarrassing. Because I'm walking up, I'm showing up, I'm standing next to people who are white belts that I know can kick my ass any day, any fucking time. A white belt in jiu-jitsu is still a badass motherfucker compared to a lot of people that aren't training any martial arts. You can bodybuild, you can weight lift, or weight lifts, you can lift weights and you can make yourself look really formidable, but if you don't... If you don't train something, you're going to get your ass handed to you by a fucking two-stripe white belt that's going to do something stupid and still kick your ass. So it was a big deal. Um, meant a lot to me. I started jujitsu the weekend, like the Monday after my brother-in-law was killed. Uh, he was sadly and unfortunately strangled to death in an altercation at a party. I don't know all the details because, quite honestly, they're so irrelevant. It doesn't change the fact that he's gone, so I never bothered learning them. It's very upsetting. I wasn't there when it happened. And no one ever talked to me about it uh, much after it did happen, so that's all you're, all you're getting from me. I don't, I don't have any more details. And then um, along the way, I was becoming a great big fan of Anthony Bourdain, watched Parts Unknown constantly, have all of his books, most of them anyways, got his cookbook, um, just really got into this awesome fucking guy and turns out he killed himself. He was a blue belt in jujitsu for, um, <laughs> fucking connection sake context. He, so, uh, it means a lot to me to have made it to the same rank he was in jujitsu. It might be kind of arbitrary to you, but, uh, it, it symbolized something important to me. So, uh, I felt a lot of connection in that way. I also met a really good friend, um, uh, man, uh, the name Mike Strait, who was my first, uh, friend I made at the new gym, Gracie Baja in San Inez Valley. So he, uh, he passed away a couple months into me training there and he was also a blue belt and, uh, it was really cool of him to make me so comfortable in in a place that is otherwise extremely uncomfortable and it's the art of getting uncomfortable you're strangling strangers you know getting hurt and getting you know sometimes people are fucking putting their face in your balls vice versa and you're getting 
uncomfortable situations with people that you really would never touch in that way. So it's really cool when you got someone with a great sense of humor and a dazzling personality to make things cooler. And unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Neither is Anthony Bourdain. Neither is my brother-in-law, John. So uh, I just want to carry on those kind of people. I have their names written on the inside of my gi, always. I see them, changes my spirit, changes my attitude. I train with a different kind of mentality. So that was number two. Sorry I spent so much time on that. It was a big one. Uh, Number three, the solitude. Solitude of the pandemic. I could actually honestly like add a couple things to the uh, list here and round it out, but the solitude of the pandemic was great. I loved sitting at home, uh, just being by myself and not feeling guilty for it because it was really important. People made it to be really important that you're not out spreading a disease and, you know, disease, virus, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Big deal. You know, getting credit for just being a lazy bastard. I was pretty good at that before, but usually there's an ounce of guilt every time I was inside doing it. So here we are. I got, I I started doing yoga. That was great. Um, I used to go on bike rides by myself, just all along this bike trail in Lompoc, and I'd always end the bike rides at this baseball diamond. I don't even remember the name of the park, but it was just the parks, you know, services have been shut down. It's this overgrown baseball diamond, and I would just listen to audiobooks and podcasts, and just, I'd ride my bike every day, and that was, it wasn't for health, it wasn't for like some fucking instagrammable moment it was just some re- reflection get some energy out get some aggression into these pedals you know and uh i stayed away from cars i wasn't in the middle of the fucking street or holding up traffic there's nothing worse than people on bikes that make people in cars have a more difficult time get the fuck off the road that share the road bullshit's ridiculous you're in the fucking street where cars were meant to be if you want to go tour to france you can tour to fuck off and i know that's probably fucking episode one bullshit you're listening to again but fuck them get out of my way i'm driving bike rides great time though um number four remy moved back into my life moved back into my house my brother uh, had a falling out with my sister they had been living together after of course my brother-in-law had been killed you know needed there's been a couple falling outs between my family in the events and years after my brother-in-law being killed but um at one point my brother had to move back in with me and my mom and remy came along because it's his dog but it's also one of my best friends in this world is a four-legged animal i never thought i'd say that um it's a really big deal to me to be able to have like a literal emotional support animal at my disposal during a couple months over the summer before i moved out that was awesome That was another weird one I wrote down. I had like a pet frog or a toad rather um, at my old job, Skyview. There was this every night I worked 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I'd have to do a couple walks throughout the property, you know, check rooms, check bullshit, make sure everything was fucking tip top, not burning the place down. And there was this little companion. I had this little toad just like chill. And I'd be like, oh, that's cool. You know, first couple times I'm like, oh, cool. I saw the toad again. He's oh, that's weird, fucking, there he is again, and just without fail, nearly every single week, every single shift almost, I'd find him somewhere, and I'd, it began to the point where I was like, oh man, where I named him, his name was Ribbert, you know, like Robert, but Ribbert, Ribbit, get it? I'm funny, took a fucking dozen pictures of him, that's a lie, I took maybe a hundred pictures did i say a dozen i meant dozens i'm fucking lying to you um honestly just the cute little highlight of my shift you know walk around sometimes the job can get a little boring and i get a, go get a little stir crazy you know i know i romanticized how much i love the job but it's uh sometimes there's some downsides and that's what makes me appreciate the other sides but i got to hang out with this little fucking toad how cool is that I'd go up, I'd pet him, you know, give him a couple, like, head scratches. There's this really weird thing. There's, like, the the sides of their neck, like, t- maybe, like, 
by their arms almost you like scratch that on a toad and it's like when you get a dog's underbelly and you get that like good spot and you're like, you know scratch it and their leg starts going you do that to a toad they go ah, 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 and they like kind of like you know like get their neck kind of kinked in and twisted and looking at you and they got one eye closed and you're like oh yeah no you know because who the fuck ever scratches an amphibious creature's little neck little good spot so that was pretty cool um oh, another big deal was the fat pile jam on halloween um, I got to skate with a bunch of friends. I got to see a bunch of old friends at the wreck in a Pomo. That was so awesome. Uh, any gatherings that were really, um, oh, excuse me, any gatherings with all of those people from my past and now present and hopefully future. Uh, sorry. Uh, excuse me. I don't know. Talking makes you burp. I know that I burp a lot on the podcast. I'm not just being a rude asshole. Something about it just lets them out, lets them come out. So that was a big deal being at the, you know, local skate park built by little skateboarders celebrating Halloween. It was on Halloween. How fucking cool is that? So that was like the coolest Halloween I've had in a long time. Didn't feel like Halloween whatsoever. How cool is that? Went over and saw Matt Diaz's memorial on Frontage Road in Napomo. Had a big moment of silence, held back some tears as usual, and then uh, ended up going out, going over to Gus Bus's house and partying it up and fucking shooting some pool and drinking some beer, and it was a great, great, great fucking time. So happy that happened. Uh, number seven, I went shooting with my dad, not once but twice, and that's a really big deal. Uh, my dad's been kind of not out of my life i'm 25 you know he's not like seeing me for breakfast every day when i wake up i don't live with my parents or anymore you know anything like that but uh to have him around to hang out with him uh, is a really big deal he's been in a shitty marriage for my entire adult life and it's a fucking it's a bummer because he doesn't love this lady and she sucks and he knows he needs to get out of it but uh they're not they're not, so I don't get to see him as much as I would like. I was He was my best friend growing up. I was a lonely child, best friend with my dad. I got to go shooting, and that was a really big deal. Uh, guns have always been a part of my life, even early on. I was always shooting cap guns, BB guns, airsoft guns. You know, as you guys heard in the fucking Dane Freeze episode, the first airsoft gun I got, first thing I did with it, <laughs> went and shot some asshole kid in the ass probably a bad sign but uh i'm fine uh fine now still got a level head on my shoulders but that was a really big deal went and took some guns out and sh- shot them with my dad and that was fucking awesome and uh there's a there's a, another story i have but i don't know uh, i'm waiting to see how it plays out legality wise may have been shooting somewhere i shouldn't have but i'm here i'm alive i'm well everything's fine i'm not in jail no one else is harmed so We'll see how that plays out, and I'll give you a recap on that. Good old story there. Um, at number eight, podcast guests. I had a unfortunately really small year for this podcast. You know why? Because of the pandemic. Um, I really wanted to be accessible to more people, and I wanted more people to be accessible to me, but I kind of got... I fell in love with the solitude and isolation, and I really didn't reach out to people that I might have otherwise interviewed and I still got a few I even took like a month off the podcast I think right is a month June yeah I just just said fuck it I uh, I need to stay away from everything and just took some time for myself I don't know what I did besides gain a bunch of weight and drink like a sad bitch <sighs> but oh I remember what happened that was when those riots and all over the country started. I was like, if I have a podcast, I'm just going to say something stupid I'm going to regret and get canceled for. And some people are going to loot my house if I do it. So better not. But yeah, I just want to thank Daniel Bax, Kylie, of course, Kiana, Dane, Nelson, Allie, Chris, Emily, Phil, Kale, Jonathan Lopez, of course, Clara, all of you terrific terrific episodes i couldn't have asked for uh angelina of course fucking forgot to write her down but i just remembered that i didn't include everyone because i'm a fucking idiot um all of you thank you so much uh you made the podcast survive this year and 
the guest episodes are always the most frequently downloaded and everyone seems to enjoy those the most and why not who wants to just sit here and listen to some cock smoke fucking talk about himself the whole time and i know essentially this is what this is is a list of why my life is good this year but don't worry there's plenty of bad shit that happened i'm just not focusing on it right now so i'm just trying to you know shed some positive light on some cool things that happen and you know realize maybe this year wasn't so fucking bad like we uh like to say it was so that was nice um number nine as of the 27th year i don't have covid i never got covid i'm not sick you know i was really fucking sick at the beginning of the year and i know excuse me I know a lot of people say, like, I think I already had it. They, you know, that shit where people are like, nah, I think I must have already had it. I was this bad flu season. Like, I think that was, like, the first wave of COVID or whatever. Maybe we had it. Who knows? But I got it. And I haven't had the flu since I was, like, maybe in maybe 10, 11 years old. Like, I have not been, like, genuinely sick like that in a long fucking time. So it was a... Uh, either covid which as far as i remember all the uh, uh symptoms matched up but if that wasn't i didn't get covid and i still don't have covid and i didn't have covid when it mattered when everyone was counting people so holla and that's right all the things i'm telling you that i done did and do with other people and i have not gotten covid i'm gonna knock on wood here i am not a very fucking um superstitious person i don't believe in any of that hoopla and i think karma's fake and astrology's bullshit and you're a dumb cunt if you think it's real and um a knock on wood's the one thing i got though that's one thing i'm like i better knock on some wood so here we are all right um number 10 the matt brain podcast i only got two maybe three episodes out um it was really cool while it lasted. Um, I, of course, had to move and the pandemic started, so I couldn't record the podcast with my jujitsu coach any longer. Sorry, Jason. I know that you were having a lot of fun with that. I was having a lot of fun with that. And if it ever is resurrected, I told him, feel free to take the name, logo, whatever you want, like it's yours. Make a jujitsu podcast. That's terrific. I think it's awesome. Here you go. And I, uh, <sighs> you know, empower him to do so. But that was a really cool thing to kind of, it like strengthened my podcasting by saying like, oh, I have two podcasts now. I have a whole nother one, same RSS feed. And I do this sometimes. And it was, it was really fucking cool. That was awesome. It felt great. I was like, hey, here we go. That'll do. That'll work for me. So, <sighs> uh, good times really happy to do that because it you know someone sitting down talking to a white belt about jujitsu and really getting to the nitty-gritty of it it's really awesome and it was just an excuse to really lean into the jujitsu and mma and all the martial arts side of things so i didn't have to annoy you regular listeners because i'm sure there's some things you stick around for and some things you get really irritated by um i would love to hear it by the way feedback's important positive negative i don't care what it is like seriously just write me up she'd be like hey uh, i was listening you said you're cool with feedback here's what i think just tell me that just say it like that just be like hey just some feedback you know dm me on instagram text me email the podcast bad etiquette podcast at gmail.com it's that easy buddy you know message me on facebook there's a facebook for it all those things totally fine um, number 11 gun ownership increased dude everyone started losing their minds that was fucking crazy so i mean losing their minds i don't know about that but even i like in march was looking for a gun gonna go buy one and had a, it was it was great it was a fucking i love that it's more socially acceptable now and it's you know there's i think uh black gun, gun ownership has gone up exponentially i don't have the stats here with me but i think it's just awesome i think everyone has the right to defend themselves and i think everyone uh, you know has the right to bear arms that's something i as you know along with the first amendment strongly believe in the fucking second amendment so i'm sure there's some other amendments i'm not sure what they are but i'll read them one day <laughs> uh so that was you know that's a big deal um it does suck that ammo is so expensive and i can't get um another gun at a reasonable price right now because there's a little bit of gouging but which is good keeps it so you know 
that I still can get some things, just got to pay a little extra dollar for it. Remember when they didn't gouge water and toilet paper and then there was a shortage? So, yeah. Uh, number 12. Y- y- this is an interesting one. I think I wrote down I want to expand on a little. It's uh, less people on their phones. Um, something I noticed being uh, working a job here, working uh my old job and being out in public and seeing people in public and like people are not on their phones as much i don't know why there's something about maybe wearing masks maybe being stuck inside being on your phone all day inside anyways that when you're outside at work and out shopping and on the beach no one's on their phone i went for a walk with kylie on the beach today a cardiff by the sea a lovely little beach walk fucking one person on their phone the whole time and it was like jarring i was like what are you doing they were like filming their family walking ahead of them it was some stupid fucking gen z zoomer bullshit i was like okay why the fuck are you doing that just walk pussy no one's on their phone i go to work no one's sneaking their phone now to look at it and i go back and you know when they're on their breaks they're not fucking just like sucked into their phone there's more like fucking face to face mask communication masks are annoying as shit but whatever all right number 13 weight loss i lost weight i was losing weight at the beginning of the year pandemic lockdown hit put on a lot of weight put the weight back on drank for 70 something days straight um i'm still drinking by the way it's great i I drank so much over christmas day at least a lot for me i had like three shots of whiskey two shots of vodka two screwdriver cocktails two beers and four glasses of champagne that was a lot and i did it and i loved it and i didn't throw up didn't get sick i also had two plates of breakfast food and then a plate of dinner and then cookies and came home to my mom's where i was staying over christmas and had two slices of pizza so but as soon as I moved to uh moved here in Oce- to Oceanside with Kylie, uh, fucking, she started cooking meals, making me eat a little healthier. Um, I, uh, <laughs> when you live on your own, you have less money, so you can go out to eat less. So I'm eating less bad food and eating less large quantities of food. And portion control, you know. Still working out, fucking doing this, some intermittent fasting occasionally, trying to keep a calorie deficit, you know, jujitsu, all that. Lost 15 pounds. Saw some saw some parts of my torso I've never seen before. Some something some, some things that I plan on turning into abs this year. Abazabas. So that was pretty cool. Oh, number 14. The TV shows and movies that kept me alive. I'm telling you guys. I can't remember all of them right now, but I did write down a few that really, really carried me through. And uh, in no particular order, we have Casino Royale, the James Bond movie. I've watched three or four times in the past month. Uh, I am, I could never, the story, weird story, weird background on this one. I used to rent Casino Royale and it was a long movie. I couldn't stay awake through the whole movie. Um... Because when I saw it in the theaters as a kid, I saw it at a late showing, and I fell asleep. Didn't see it. Watched it with my dad. Never finished the movie. Had no idea how it went. And then the... (laughs) Woke me up, and I was like, oh, Jesus. And every time I'd rent the movie, I'd watch it on, you know, Stars or Cinemax, wherever the fuck it was, you know, when I stole cable for a little while. Could never finish it. Had no idea what a fucking excellent, goddamn good, amazing movie it was. Then, I don't know, just recently, I just put it on, started it, said, fuck it, let's give it a try. I'm a big James Bond guy. I love a nice, old, uh, iconic white male character that's right up my white male ass, you know? Allie, whatever. So, watched it, sure enough, fucking, god damn it, I fucking love that movie. It literally, literally has been, like, carrying me into this, the end of the year. Watching Casino Royale has, is irresponsible for helping me get my blue belt. I'm dead serious. Anyways. Um, yeah, uh, The Last Dance, that fucking Michael Jordan Bulls documentary. Holy shit. Now, that was one of my favorite things was just to watch that during pandemic get fucking sauced. I used to have 
nothing but Jack and Cokes. Well, really Seagram 7s because I'm a cheap bastard and Coca-Colas and holy shit. So fucking good. So good. I, mm, you have no idea. Just the joy of being home alone or being in a living room by yourself, no one to bother you, no one to get sick and just, just watch basketball and men and get drunk oh and you know what else i did that with the sopranos i was down to the last four or five episodes of the sixth and final season they fucking take it off hulu i can't fucking watch it now so i have no idea how the sopranos ends i mean everyone knows sopranos has that like fucking controversial ending and i really just I, I know what happens, but I just don't fucking know it in the context of watching the show in a binge-watching fashion. So I'm still a little upset about that, but The Sopranos was a great escape during all of this. Fantastic. Love that. Fargo. I've been watching Fargo, the show, that first season, amazing. unfuck second season, so fucking good. A little weird with the UFO shit. Don't know what to think about that. Um, third season I'm in the middle of right now. This is good. I'm wondering where it's going. I'm really loving Ewan McGregor. So I know fourth is going to be good. Everyone says it's the best one and Chris fucking Rock is in it. Probably going to be a pretty good. So Mandalorian, dude, this second season of Mandalorian. Holy fuck. Spoilers ahead for the Mandalorian. Boba Fett comes back. Fucking Bill Burr comes back. Oh my god. Luke Skywalker at the end there takes Baby Yoda. Oh my god. I can't believe it's even real. I can't believe I cried for the last episode. I don't cry very often. I don't have a lot of tears left in me. You know, I cried a lot for a lot of other things. I'm running low on the crying for shit bullshit. So that was one of those things that got me. Um, also another thing that got me was Band of Brothers watched that at the beginning of the year so good so fucking unbelievable I watched it as a kid I loved the war movies dad you know always had war movies action movies Band of Brothers is something he had when I was a kid and I'd watch it with him and you know there's so many of them you just don't know where you left off where to begin and his was the one that started with the uh, had the uh real life people that the characters are based off of you know uh intro and outro the episodes and it was just fucking dude i'm i feel like no kind of man 2020 was really a big year for me in terms of just leveling up i turned 25 in an uneventful birthday otherwise you know because it happened during the pandemic not because i didn't have a good time with the people i was with but you know, I'm 25. That's supposed to be your diamond year, right? I am I was born on the 25th. See, I don't believe in that shit. It doesn't fucking matter anyways. But yeah, that's when you're a real man. <laughs> Paying rent now. This really goes well into uh, number 15, honestly. Um, which is being, uh, being a man at a house. I'm, you know, I'm the man of the house because I'm the only man here, but just doing things like in a responsible way, you know, even if it means like doing sometimes like I, I have, I take pride in doing dishes, taking out the trash, doing my laundry, helping or out around the house. You know, I don't contribute as much as, uh, I probably should, especially if you ask Kylie, but just the little things like pr- keep making sure like the doors are locked and protecting the house and caring for things and like just being, ah, oh, man, this whole year, just little by little is like turn I'm literally going out of this year with a cigar in my hand. I have a bottle of scotch somewhere around here. I don't know what happened to that. I'm just I have a mustache. I'm wearing a sweater right now. I'm full fucking wannabe Ernest Hemingway. Gotta tell you. I, I'm I might be a man, but I might just be a hipster too, so let's leave that criticism up for debate. Feels so good being the man at home number 16 you know what's helped this year go along nicely the ufc this might have been the greatest year in mma just because of the ufc 
so many fucking events i couldn't even keep my goddamn head on straight even the ones that were canceled because covid were epic they were gonna be epic (laughs) and all of the ones that took place the year literally started with conor mcgregor breaking donald cowboy cerrone's nose like in 40 seconds defeating him holy fuck Am I bummed he did that to Cowboy because I love Cowboy and the fight was too short and I wanted to see more from him? Well, yeah. Am I stoked that that's how the f- was the fucking set the bar for the whole year? And then who if you who if you would have told me, hey, guess what? By the end of the year, the names uh, Kamzat Chiamayev and Kevin Holland are going to be booming in your fucking years i'm like who the fuck those guys i'm pretty sure kevin holland's from santa barbara too i could be confusing him for another black uh mixed martial artist because i'm a fucking ignorant white guy that is probably gonna get my ass kicked someday but i don't fucking know is it is he not is kevin holland not the one or is that chaos williams see there's another one there's another one who i i just can't fucking believe i now they're on my radar the ufc's fucking amazing did so much he's badass i'm just gonna look up kevin holland because i think he actually is kevin holland there we go uh, this is riverside shit i don't think it's him who am i thinking of he was born riverside damn it well he okay the guy he fought then was from what's it called joaquin is it joaquin buckley no, he's Missouri. Where, who the fuck was it? Dude, I am fucking tripping out. No, it was Joaquin Buckley. It had to be. I don't fucking know. Anyways. um, Damn, I have no idea what's going on. No, it wasn't him. No, it was him. It was, it was Joaquin Buckley. Sorry, Kevin Holland fought and knocked out... Joaquin Buckley, that's why I uh, got him confused. Not because they're black, I swear. (sighs) Number 17, alcohol. I drank a lot. I drank everything. I drank tequila, vodka. What else? (coughs) Champagne, beer, whiskey, scotch. Uh, hard kombuchas, fucking white claws, trulies. Found a new favorite beer. I really didn't drink that much whiskey. Like I, I know I had a lot of whiskey like during lockdown, but I usually have a lot more during the year because there wasn't a, at as many bars. And usually a go to at a bar is just like I don't want anyone to think I'm a bitch. I'm gonna order whiskey. So that could have been it. But, uh, fuck yeah, I drank a lot. Loved it. Ugh. Yeah, found a new favorite beer. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, because I don't want you buying it off the shelf, so I can't have it next time I'm around. I'm just kidding, that's horrible. That's famine thinking. That's the reason we're out of toilet paper. It's called Moose Drool by Big Sky Brewing from Montana. Small world. It's my favorite beer. I found a beer of it, a can of it, at the boys in San Diego's Garrett, Dane, and Daniel's house. And you pretended like I didn't fucking want it. And then they offered it to me, and I fucking drank it. And it was the best goddamn beer I'd had in a long goddamn time. A nice brown ale in a can. And then I had been craving it ever since. And I went to BevMo, and Kylie found it because I was too fucking stupid and couldn't notice it. And got a six-pack of that. So good. Went to the good old fam's house, uh, my mom's boyfriend's parents' house for Christmas dinner. There's a bottle of it in the bottom fucking drawer. This is a hard-to-find beer, if you ask me, because it took me long enough to fucking find it. There's just a random bottle of it. And I just like grabbed it and sat down next to Kylie at the Christmas dinner table. And she's like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, what are the odds? And then my brother sitting one seat over from Kylie is like, oh, funny story. When I lived in Montana, my aunt's best friend owns that brewing company. What? 
That's fucking crazy. What what kind of small world bullshit is that? That is unfucking believable. I'm still tripping out on that, honestly. But that is my favorite fucking beer right now, and I love it. I can't wait to have some more of it. Um, Red Ace on <sighs> number eighteen podcasts. Holy shit, podcast! Not just mine. I'm talking podcasts in general. We had Rogan move over from all platforms just to Spotify. That's crazy. He's always doing fucking great podcasts. Can't complain about that. I mean, shit, so many fucking good one, good ones. History Hyenas, I started listening to that with fucking, you know, what are their names? Fucking, it doesn't matter. History Hyenas, fucking Joe List, Mindful Metal Jacket, awesome. Tuesdays with Stories, the Bill Burt podcast. That one might be my favorite now. Uh, Whitney Cummings, Good For You. I think she premiered her podcast this year. Maybe it was last year. I don't know. Um your own backyard can't fuck with that one you know that one's doing some real good goddamn work shout out to chris lambert he's my friend good guy and uh if you guys like your own backyard podcast well maybe give me a follow jesus um king and the sting fucking uncle joey dude joey diaz ended the church of what's happening now fucking ripped my heart out started as a new podcast over in new jersey uncle uncle joey's joint fucking awesome badass two bears one cave God, I fucking love that Tim Dillon show. Um, congratulations with Chris D'Elia. That one took a, a little bit of a break. They haven't posted any episodes in a while. Yeah, I haven't heard anything since June 11th. Don't know what happened there. But Chris D'Elia, I love you. Come back. Um, Whiskey Ginger with uh, Andrew Santino. Jesus. Be- History Hyenas and Whiskey Ginger, those two have my favorite theme songs like the intro those songs so good i think mine's okay but theirs is amazing both of theirs i love them doug stanhope podcast bad etiquette podcast that's mine burt cast ari shafir's skeptic tank i mean i'm saving the best for the last year folks ari shafir's skeptic tank and the monday morning podcast with bill burr those are my favorites that's what my show takes the most influence from believe it or not even though i'm a big fucking want to be rogan all the time so appreciate that damn that was number 18 dude i have two more but uh i don't know what they are i haven't written them down yet they're blank spaces on the page i thought maybe i could arrive at some conclusive items or topics subjects to put in here reflect positively upon cigars thankful for cigars this year i could do that i could say that but i'm really Really, why? Why Why would I do that? Just waste one on something trivial like that? I mean, it's all trivial, right? Just a fucking drop in a big pond, life is. One thing, one thing I add, number 19, Christmas, Christmas Day. I didn't have any money this year. I still don't have any money. I had a negative bank account balance until Christmas Eve. I was, I was negative a couple hundred dollars. No one was getting a Christmas present for me, especially on Christmas Eve, and the shopping is horrendous. And then I need whatever money I have for rent next month. That's coming up on New Year's Day. Holy shit. Fucking losing it. I didn't get an opportunity to get anyone a present. I feel horrible. I like giving people presents. I wanted to give Kylie presents. Hannah, my roommate, deserves a present. Fucking my mom, her mom, my dad, her dad, you know, my brother, her brother. Fucking my nieces, fucking all kinds of people deserve presents. Didn't get to get them. You know, all of my friends in San Diego. That would have been awesome. Chris and Allie, you know. All kinds of people I wish I could have got presents for. But I'm not rich. I don't know what to get them. Is this podcast not a present enough for you people? But Christmas Day was so terrific. I had a lovely time. I had breakfast with Kylie's family and... You know, got a gift from them, even though I didn't, you know, couldn't get that. You know, I, we actually we played Secret Santa. I did. I did. I got her uh, brother in the Secret Santa draw. Got him a couple things. He got me some golf balls. Totally cool. Whatevs. Nice time. Got to spend Christmas Eve, actually, uh, with her family, you know, having dinner and drinking champagne. That was great. Such a lovely time. Dude, th- there's nothing that makes you appreciate family. And appreciate being 
with loved ones than being in a pandemic and then moving away and then not being able to access them. I feel really, I'm, I feel so bad for people who can't do that. People who didn't have the opportunity, people who maybe don't have the families that they are comfortable enough doing things with, or maybe don't get that kind of satisfaction from being with them, especially on a holiday. Maybe people are, you know, in some really horrible situations where the family alienates them for some litany of reasons. I'm feel, I'm very thankful that this year it was easily the most joyous Christmas day I've had in a really long fucking time in a abysmal year. That was awesome. It meant a lot to me to be able to go through that with people. I mean, how fucking cool. Christmas, And then, yeah, I had breakfast at Kylie's parents, went over to my mom's boyfriend's parents' house, and had a lovely dinner and drank most of the night and got I got some presents there too which I wasn't expecting and I honestly was mad my mom texted me and everything she was asking about presents and I said if you get me anything for Christmas I'm blocking your number <sighs> so they didn't get me anything thankfully but I got a blanket and I got some flannels and I got some weed so those were all really cool things that I wasn't expecting. Didn't get them from my mom. Got them from her boyfriend's family and boyfriend. So that was really cool. Really unexpected. Um, didn't didn't go home empty-handed. Unfortunately, I showed up empty-handed. Really, especially for Kylie. That sucks. You know, I love her. I sleep next to her every day. I want to fucking give her the world. She puts up with my bullshit. I put up with her bullshit too. Don't get me wrong. You know, and it does so much for me. Fucking, I want to show up with a goddamn truck of Christmas presents for someone. Just like, oh, do you like this? Do you like this thing? Do you do this thing? Were you needing this thing? Would your life be cooler and better and more convenient and awesome if we had this gift and that gift? And I know it's kind of a materialistic thing, but fuck. Getting presents is fucking awesome. Don't lie to me yourself. Don't lie to me. Awesome. Right, bitch? Ugh. Oh, it's a great time. What else this year? I can't, I'm trying to think of one other thing I'm thankful for this year. I know it's not Thanksgiving, but I'm just saying, like, here's my 20 for 2020. I really got to think. I got to sit here. I mean, shit. I don't know. You know, I guess finally 2020 was a positive year because I didn't lose very many people. Not a lot of people passed away. I still have mo the majority of my family and friends. Uh, and that's a really good thing. Really big moment. It's always a, you know, I mean, there's still three days left. Who knows? One of my nieces could go all postal and kill my whole family, but I doubt it. So I think I'm just going to end on a lovely, positive note. I hope you had a beautiful 2020 in spite of everything. I hope that you're ending it happy and healthy in a home. And I hope 2021 is a excellent, excellent, improved drastically year for you. Thank you for listening. Bad Etiquette Podcast is here. I'll always be here until I'm not, of course. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the new year. This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast. Where the fuck are you? Bad Etiquette Podcast.